They're doing just fine without them. They're doing their, just fine. Yes, I know yeah. what you're talking about. I'm with you. All of the pieces are amazing, and I'm going to keep them working and having a good time. Like, nothing fits me. I want to make my own so they can fit little people like me. That might be the biggest show of fashion. I heard they're going to take away your phones. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Hey guys, it's Amanda. Today I am spilling tea on the fashion industry. So I just got back from New York Fashion Week. I don't even know what number New York Fashion Week this is for me, but I think by now I am like, I got it down. So I'm gonna give you some tips. I'm gonna give you tea, helpful advice, some secrets on fashion, on, on the fashion industry. So I've learned that you don't have to attend every single event, every single show. I've learned to attend the events and the shows that really are meaningful to you. That way your schedule is filled with things that you're excited about and not kind of like, oh, I need to be at this place, I need to be at this place. And then if you miss one place, you're like, why wasn't I at that one? And you're just happier to be there, you're more relaxed and like you're going to the events that you're really excited about. It means more to the brands and the maybe magazines or whoever is hosting the event that you've made the time to come to their event instead of their event just being one of the million you're at. The events that I really, really liked this fashion week were the Teen Vogue and Snapchat and then the Slash Fashion um, YouTube event. That's crazy to think that New York Fashion Week YouTube and Snapchat parties were my favorite, but I guess it makes sense. Those were so important to me to go to because I met the people that I should be meeting. So at like the Teen Vogue Snapchat party, I got to meet up with a bunch of other YouTubers and kind of influencers that I've follow online that I've talked to online but I haven't met in person so this was so exciting to make those in-person connections and if we want to make a video if we want to collab or something it's just natural and it's not forced the YouTube event was hosted by Derek Blasberg who is head of beauty and fashion partnerships at YouTube so I thought it would be perfect to sit down, chat with him quickly in the car to talk more on all of these things from the fashion expert himself. So I always have a mental breakdown at one point during the Oh yeah? Yeah. Like I cry. Usually at least one time. <laughs> I missed like a Mark J Jacob show like last year and I didn't get invited Mark Jacob this year. very famously <laughs> on, starts yeah, at, like on time. it's a six o'clock show, it starts at five fifty nine. So how do you survive New York Fashion Week? Not by accident. There's a lot of strategy. I take all these crazy potions. Do you know lysophoric? Lysophoric is like this foul tasting vitamin C goo, but it's one zillion percent vitamin C, so I take that for immunity. <laughs> Go to Starbucks at least three times a day. When I'm feeling sick, I put tea tree oil, this is not a joke, on, on the insides of my nostrils to help purify the air that I breathe in. How much sleep do you usually get during your fashion? Now you may not want to hear this, but for a boy, your fashion week is not so as true. strenuous yeah. as a girl, I can get ready to go to a show in 10 minutes. Jealous. It takes like two and a half hours. <laughs> I want to ask you how you feel about, you know, the fashion industry and like YouTube coming together. So I went to a very traditional journalism program. I went to New York University. I have a degree in journalism and I thought I was going to work in magazines for the rest of my life. My first job out of college was working at Vogue. I was arguably the worst assistant in Vogue history and I didn't last long. I was quickly bumped out of there after a year and then you know 15 years later it's become apparent that what I used to love about magazines, all those things that I did then, I now get to do at YouTube. What's incredibly exciting about Slash Fashion is that the 18 year old boy in Missouri that I was, the, the new version of that, can just go youtube.com slash fashion and find all that good stuff. How did you get into fashion? So I started my YouTube channel when I was 10. So I was like looking up on YouTube how to sew. I don't even know how it started, I just always wanted to be a fashion designer. I was very like, I was very petite and I wanted to wear the big girl clothes, like right. the adult clothes. Yes. I was too little to ever fit into like, I remember Forever 21, I just wanted to fit in the clothes so bad. When I was there was 10, no Forever 10. There was no see? Forever 10. <laughs> I actually found Bloomingdale's kids had the best clothes. Oh really? I'd pull up to school and be like, I'm wearing designer. <laughs> so I just wanted to make my own clothes because I was like, nothing fits me. I want to make my own so they can fit little people like me. <laughs> and I just ended up on YouTube. You know, that's not such a dissimilar story than how Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen started their fashion brand. Really? But ultimately what inspired them to start The Row was that when they were very young, there was not mature clothes mm -hmm. 
that they could acquire. And so now the row is super successful. Thank Fashion God they didn't get on YouTube. You guys, <laughs> that, that, you started at the same place and that's mm. where your paths diverted. Maybe if they were younger, they would have. What did people in the inside of fashion say about YouTubers before versus all right. now? All right, all right. You're not wrong to think that fashion is often an industry that's a little slow to warm up to advances in technology. They were slow to social media. But now it's an undeniable fact that YouTube has one of the biggest influences on fashion. I know so many fashion people that are desperate to become YouTubers mm -hmm. that I think this, this sort of gulf that used to exist between the YouTube universe and the fashion world is getting like smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay. I'm sitting here with you. I love this. You're going to Marc Jacobs shows. <laughs> I'm going to YouTube Creator Summits. Fashion Week has, has definitely found a place on YouTube. The fashion people, the models, the supermodels that really don't need to have YouTube channels for their success. They're doing just fine without them. They're doing them. just fine. Yes, I know, you know what you're talking about. I'm with you. I know a lot of models who started their channels and they all have sort of different reasons. So Alexa Chung, she was excited to start a YouTube channel because she wanted to sort of control her own style narrative on YouTube. Okay. So on YouTube, there's a zillion sort of Alexa Chung tribute mm -hmm. videos and she's like, I can do this. So she was appealed to sort of telling her own story to this huge audience. Naomi Campbell's another person who started her channel. So Naomi started her channel because she also wanted to control her own narrative. Mm -hmm. So we know with the sort of public facing Naomi, which was sort of a 90s supermodel plagued by scandals. It's like the Naomi I know and the Naomi that Naomi is happy to put on YouTube is actually a girl who wears rubber gloves to clean her airplane seat, goes to Whole Foods to her vegan marshmallows. Mm -hmm. A lot of times models aren't necessarily in the driver's seat. Yeah. How do you separate what you put on all of your different platforms? YouTube videos take lots of work <laughs> for us. We plan them out, schedule them, we have ideas and we walk through every process. Instagram, I think it's just like moments. Got you know? it. And that's something that I've had to help reinforce to my friends in the fashion world that YouTube is not easy. YouTube is yeah. hard. You have to have a quiet room. You have to have someone who knows how to edit. If there's music playing, you have to get music rights. It's it's not as easy as just setting up a loomy light in your bathroom and banging out a couple videos. So what are you doing tonight? Tonight, I'm getting ready for Fenty. That might be the biggest show of fashion. I heard they're gonna take away your phones. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So not normal? No. So, unfortunately, vlog, we won't be able to yes, show that's you not Fenty. A I was about to be like, yes, see next there. stop is Fenty. It's yeah. like, no, nope, you're stuck with me. All Sorry. Right. We'll see. So meeting up with them was really great. Um, I had a bunch of questions because it's really interesting to hear what the fashion industry thinks of people like me breaking into, you know, the fashion world and getting recognized in the fashion industry. Now that I have my own clothing brand, it was even more interesting to have this conversation with him and to kind of reflect on how things would be without my social media following and how that affects the fashion business. Over the years, I've learned what goes into kind of making clothes more, so that kind of educated me on starting my own brand and realizing years ago I wasn't completely ready even though I did want to start my clothing brand. At that time I wasn't ready and I still had so much more to learn. We're on set of Steel Fall Shoot and look at this, it's like not just black and white. Interesting. Staying with our business chic, fun, sexy vibe. Really like this sexy dress, sexy, sexy party dress. And then this is going to be like a great addition to the wardrobe for sure. So it was actually kind of difficult for me to start my clothing brand. It took like two years of finalizing a contract with someone that I trusted and we kind of negotiated on how much I owned and what kind of say I had in the brand and how much they did. I just saw this file on my computer three years ago. I created like my first collection, but it's not till now that these things are actually happening. So it takes a long time. But what I learned was to be prepared before meeting with someone. Before meeting with this brand, I had my entire collection planned out. I spent since 13 years old signing with my manager trying to have a clothing line. I was just kind of waiting for a brand to want to do like a capsule collection with me, but the opportunity really never came, so that's when I decided we're just going to we're just going to do it myself. We're just going to 
do this thing. Things have been hard with the brand when coming to an understanding with this business partner. So they have a schedule of when things drop, how many pieces drop in each collection. And I, on the other hand, care more about making high quality attention to detail pieces. Things should have been dropped in an earlier collection but ended up being pushed to a later one because I wanted to make sure that things were perfect and if they were not ready to be released, I just said no. Because I'm only gonna put out stuff that I love. Okay, so we went up in sizes because people were complaining about it being too small, which like totally feel it. So we added extra extra small and then we like made like the extra small and all the other sizes bigger. But it has been so amazing to see my designs come to life and like my style become a brand. I'm wearing my steel sweater right now. I'm obsessed with it. Seeing girls buying the clothes and wearing them and just seeing how they pose and they take their photos, like nothing can compare. That like my vision and the things that I think are cute, little details that I make to my pieces, being worn by these girls and seeing their confidence come through while wearing them is just so rewarding and I'm just like, this is why we do it. If you guys want to get into the fashion industry, whether it's designing your own brand or you know, working for media, it's really important to be yourself and commit to your decisions. That's gonna get recognition and success. Is someone that knows what they want, knows what they like, are open to other ideas, but have their own and they're strong on it. Social media is a good way to get into it by just following people in the industry, kind of see how they work, and maybe even smaller people that go to design school or are studying it, you can kind of connect with online. If you have the opportunity to go to school for fashion, that is where you will get insane amount of opportunities and you'll meet the right people but if not that's not the only way you can do it clearly because i didn't go to college although i could go to more school later in life i'm like totally open to it for right now my career where it's at is what needs most of my attention and a lot of things that i would study in school are things that i've learned through experience already everything is online those you can research everything you can figure out how to do anything youtube is a beautiful beautiful place take the time at least watch like two videos a day that teach you something i hope this was educational but if you have more questions if there's anything kind of left out please comment down below and i'll probably do like a q a answering those so let me know what else you want to know i want to help you guys out as much as i can Hope you guys enjoyed this and thank you so much for watching. Bye. And I'm really bloated and now the top doesn't fit me very well.